bridges to cycle across between Newcastle and Gateshead. The High Level Bridge was built in 1849 and is the oldest bridge between Newcastle and Gateshead. This bridge is 407 metres long. Pros of this bridge is that it's on top of the Tyne Gorge, which means if you're going into Newcastle City Centre, you don't have to climb up the steep slopes to get there. This can also provide the most direct route between Newcastle and Gateshead, and only buses use this route. The cons of this route is there's no dedicated cycleway and the lanes are narrow, which means trying to get past pedestrians which share either side of the bridge is difficult. The railway track is above the bridge as well, which can lead to this feeling safe at night with its limited lighting. So you can see as we cycle along the overall narrowness of those lanes, you can barely get two bikes past each other. The views across the Tyne Gorge are obviously great, there's no heavy traffic really going next to you, the occasional bus will go over. And then as you emerge past Newcastle Castle, you have a protected cycle lane which leads you underneath the East Coast Main Line, which then if you follow this round to the left, you can continue along towards Newcastle Central Station and this cycle lane with a prioritised bit at this next junction, although some drivers don't often take care of this paint, so it's always careful to watch out for that. Following here at the Sleepers Hotel is where this cycle lane comes to an end. You get dumped back into the roadway traffic. Most of it's slowed down at this point, but it's not a really great place to end as there's sometimes things parked on the double yellow lines and you have to compete then with all the traffic to get past Central Station. The swing bridge opened in 1876. It hasn't actually swung in a while. This is 171 meters long. The pros of this bridge is that whilst pedestrian share this bridge is a lot wider than the high level. However, it's usually better to ride in the roadway across this one as the pavements are quite narrow at either end. The cons of this bridge is there's actually no dedicated cycle infrastructure at either end. If you want to go into the city center, you have to climb up Dean Street, which takes a considerable amount of effort. So we're coming down to the swing bridge from the Gateshead side. Most traffic traffic does take the time bridge across so you're mostly alright to sit in the lanes in here, you shouldn't deal with too much traffic behind you. Of course if you're not the most confident cyclist this isn't the most ideal situation. Since we've come across the swing bridge you can see I, you sort of ride this in the middle of the lane and as you can see there's not much traffic coming either way. There's a bit of a bump as you go down actually onto the lane and that's the sort of joist where the bridge swings, well it's meant to swing. As you enter Newcastle again there's no sort of dedicated infrastructure. You can turn right using the bus lane but uh, I know follow around to the left and then you get to a roundabout where you can normally come off here and then join the sort of quayside cycle route which is a lot better to cycle along than sort of the busy city centre road. Pine Bridge opened in 1928 and is one of the most famous bridges although it is looking a little rusty at the moment. This bridge is 389 metres long. The pros of this bridge is that it leads you directly into Newcastle city centre from Gateshead. There is no dedicated cycle lane but this bridge has the widest footpaths. This is also at the top of the Tyne Gorge so it stops you having to get to climb up the gorge when you get to the other side. The main cons of this bridge is that it's one of the busiest bridges across the River Tyne, meaning you get a lot of road noise, so it's not pleasant to really hang around on. It's usually best to ride on the left-hand side footpath if you're going towards Newcastle City Centre, as then when you arrive at Newcastle, you don't have to take an underpass to get into the city centre. But once you get into Newcastle, there's no cycle infrastructure. So for the live ride of this bridge, we're coming from the Newcastle city centre side towards Gateshead, and you can see in places still the pavement is very narrow. Of course, with this being sort of the most popular in terms of tourism value, you do get a lot more pedestrians walking on this bridge, which you obviously have to look out for, and as there's no dedicated cycle infrastructure, bikes really do have to share this, as the time bridge is a four-lane road with that goes 40 miles an hour, which is not ideal for cyclists to be sharing the roadway with. This has some of the best views across uh, the whole of Newcastle and Gateshead. But another thing is the amount of traffic that comes along this route is a major thing. The road noise is really considerable, quite a detrimental factor. With these cars coming at 40, 50 miles an hour directly and there is no real pedestrian barrier between it, it can feel quite unsafe at times. And then when you arrive in Gateshead, again, there's no real cycle infrastructure at either end. You are just sort of dumped on a few pavements with nowhere really to go. The Red Hoo Bridge is the worst bridge to cycle across. This bridge opened in 1983 and only features one footpath and shared cycleway, which isn't very wide. This is the longest of all the Tyne bridges to, between Newcastle and Gateshead, measuring 897 metres in length. There are no real pros to this bridge, as I wouldn't normally choose to cycle across this one. Four lanes of traffic and a tiny lane 
it's the least enjoyable. Again, this bridge really has no cycle infrastructure on the Newcastle side, which means best to really ride on the pavement until you get to the shared footway and cycleway. And then from there, you can see how narrow this pavement is. This is barely wide enough for two people to walk past each other. Due to its design, mesh railings it actually traps a lot of litter from the roadway actually on the bridge. To the left-hand side of this side of the bridge, there's broken glass, wrapping, all sorts from takeaways. It's all just on the left-hand side of this bridge. You can see collected that obviously the prevailing wind is pushing this towards this edge of the bridge, which just doesn't seem to get cleaned at all. And you can see how narrow it gets when people are coming towards you, even pedestrians, you have to come to an almost complete stop in order to let them pass. And the worst thing is of all is if you meet another cyclist on this, one of you almost has to get off your bike to let the other pass. For cycling on it isn't really ideal. Again, the views are incredible, but I don't think that really warrants how awful this one is to cycle along. It's a narrow lane even if you just have it all to yourself. Luckily, when you get to the Gateshead side, is a better, better system than Newcastle's as this drops you down towards, as this takes you down towards Windmill Hills, you're, there's a route away from the main road for a section, which makes this a little bit more enjoyable. But beyond that, again, the cycle infrastructure really comes to a complete halt. Lastly, we have the Millennium Bridge. This is the newest bridge across the time between Newcastle and Gateshead, opening in 2001. This is the best in terms of cycling provision with an actual space dedicated to cycles and pedestrians. This bridge is also one of the shortest, only being 126 meters long. The pros of this bridge are its width of its cycle lane and its shared pedestrian lane, and its great views of the rest of the quayside. The cons, again, even though this is the best cycle provision, the real lack of cycle lanes at either side of the bridge, and the fact this isn't the most convenient for commuters, as it only connects gates and keys, which is largely in construction at the moment. So we pick up this live ride section along Newcastle's quayside coming from underneath the Time Bridge and heading towards the Millennium Bridge. Most likely be one of the use cases more for a leisure ride than an actual commuter ride, but this was filmed on a bank holiday and you can see the real issue of no cycle lane provision is that pedestrians and cyclists have to share what is a wide pavement but because of how popular Newcastle's quayside is this still isn't as wide as it needs to be. To the left of us there is a road provision however this is a 30 mile an hour road which actually leads away from the Millennium Bridge so if you are heading towards the Millennium Bridge it's often better to ride on this shared footway in order to get there. Then as you head towards the Millennium Bridge, what used to be the Quayside bus route lane was since moved to the main road that I just said about, and this gives you a little bit more space to cycle on. However, though, when you cycle along this and come towards the Millennium Bridge, there's only one drop curb that actually connects you up with the bridge. So if you're cycling, you have to look out for that drop curb in order to come towards the Millennium Bridge, which again shows this is not really ideal for cyclists. The pedestrian barriers slow down a lot here, but obviously that's for safety with coming towards pedestrians. And this is the pleasant route, and you can see for most of the route, if this is just cyclists on this level, it can be a really enjoyable experience, but of course in front of us there's a family walking, which no detriment to themselves, this is a shared cycle lane. To me, they need to be segregated uses, they, they shouldn't share the same use, and there should be a, a dedicated cycle lane and a dedicated pedestrian lane. And then when you get to the other end in Gates, Head, you enter into almost the Baltic Key Plaza. Now there's cycle routes that lead along the Tyne from here towards South Shields and you can also head the other way towards the Metro Centre. So there are a number of routes but again this is at the lower end of the Tyne Valley. So there's a steep climb if you want to head towards Gateshead Centre or anywhere else. So let me know in the comments section below what you think of all the crossings of the Tyne and what's your favourite to cycle along.